It's the Rob Ash Show. Featuring Drake University football. Sponsored by Des Moines Mitsubishi, Atlantic Bottling Company, and Quality Inn Event Center. <clears throat> and welcome again to the Rob Bass Show with the coach. I am Josh Middleman. Yet another blowout win for your team yesterday. If you didn't catch it, the dogs just hammered Moorhead State 33-7. to Fourth straight win for the Bulldogs. The game just a part of a very memorable weekend for the Drake football program. Well, that's right, Josh. What a great weekend it was. We had the dedication of Johnny Bright Field. Members of his family were there for that great event. We had the members of the Over the Hill gang who played with Johnny Bright. Several members of that team were on hand for the game. And a very special group of guys were also there, the members of the 1981 Drake football team that went 10-1 and and co-champions of the Missouri Valley Conference. So homecoming for lots of different people, a great event with the dedication of the field and a big win in the conference for our team. So you couldn't ask for a better day. That's right, conference win as well. And, well, a 33-7 to final. We know the offense played well, the defense played well, and I believe you're happy with special teams as well, Coach. We are, Josh. I thought it was a perfect game, a combination of things. Logan Reese had two excellent field goals and, and great kickoffs. Our offense was very productive, running and passing big plays, but it all starts with the defense. What a great defensive performance. You know, Moorhead State had scored 35 and 37 points the last two weeks. Our defense, the starters, shut them out. They got a, a touchdown late against our second team. So a great performance. And that's where great victories come is usually from the defense. It's a new rule. The Drake football team does not like giving up more than one <laughs> touchdown per game. Highlights of plenty coming up right after this. Step out of the same old, same old and step up to an exciting new vehicle from Des Moines, Mitsubishi. Like the stylish Galant, the head-turning Eclipse, the Rock Your World new Spider, or a great-looking fuel-efficient Lancer. Only at Des Moines, Mitsubishi, 90th and Hickman on the Hickman Auto Road. Check out the hot-selling Endeavor or the Outlander, Montero, or Raider. Plus the coolest and best selection of pre-owned vehicles as well. At Des Moines, Mitsubishi, where we're driven to thrill at the top of the hill. Off at MyCokeRewards.com. There's only one place to stay in Des Moines, the fully renovated Quality Inn and Suites Event Center, with rooms that have a beautiful view, an indoor pool with an outdoor feel, and an elegant ballroom for all occasions. The Governor's Lodge is a great place to relax. There are conference rooms to accommodate your business meetings, then unwind in a room with a whirlpool. Plan your next event at the Quality Inn and Suites Event Center, downtown Des Moines. You're living in a high-tech wireless universe where communication is of ultimate importance. Now you have an out-of-this-world communication store, Wireless Universe in West Des Moines. As an authorized agent for Verizon Wireless, we have a large selection of cellular phones and accessories, including Bluetooth and Nextel. Wireless Universe sells the latest digital technology, including data and email services, XM satellite radio, and cordless phones. Wireless Universe in West Des Moines, your Verizon Wireless Authorized Agent. Welcome back to the Rob Ash Show. Coach, so many things leading up to yesterday's game. you got the banquet Friday night. You've got the dedication. They always say that things like that can kind of motivate a team. Is that really the case? Well, Josh, I think in this particular instance it was. The banquet Friday night was really special. The videotapes of Johnny Bright, the videotapes of the 1981 team, and having those guys there, the Over the Hill gang and the 1981 guys there, and having our players who were all at the banquet see the tradition and the history of Drake football. And then we talked about writing the next chapter in that history on the game on Saturday. And I think it did motivate our guys. Might have even been a little bit tense maybe going into the game, but I think it was all good stuff. And I think it really did make a difference in how we played. Certainly want to put on a good performance in front of the home fans and of course, the Bright family. Let's go to the first half highlights. Drake versus Moorhead State yesterday afternoon at Drake Stadium. There's the Johnny Bright's daughters right there in the middle of the, of the crowd getting uh, balls from uh, President Maxwell and the Board of Trustees and the Overhill Gang right there behind them. Uh, we took the ball first 
thought we would get, uh, you know, maybe try to get a big play early, had Tyler Putnam deep down the sideline, but Derek Rutherford had to step away from a big rush, and, and we threw an interception. So bad start for the offense, and then the first couple plays that Moorhead State ran, they, they were fired up. I mean, they came out of there, and this is where I thought, Josh, maybe our guys were just a little too tense, too fired up, too worked up maybe at, at the very initial stages of the game. We just were kind of, you know, on edge or something. But the defense played themselves into the game here during this drive and got, the, got Moorhead stopped. Really great defense here on the option. Kevin Jennings stringing it out, and then Jimmy Adams making the tackle on the pitch. Great assignment football and got Moorhead stopped. And then we began to get a little bit going on on our offensive side ourselves. Scotty Fadevong with a good tough run inside. And then watch this big play here. Willie Cashmore, short yardage situation, off tackle power play, breaks a couple tackles out to the outside. And man, what a great run down the sideline here, trying to break it. And watch what he does here now. He continues to drive his legs and gets another 10 yards after they corralled him. And uh, we got down into the uh, red zone area. We faltered on a couple of plays, and then this field goal attempt was actually a good snap, but we just didn't handle the snap. Brandon Wubbs, our punter, who's usually a great holder, um, you know, scrambled around, lost the ball here, just a, a mess. And so we, we did, squandered that first opportunity to score. Defense, though, comes right back out here. Nice play, watch the big hit. Boom, right there by Jacob Craig, number 30, knocking the ball away. Then we get good pressure on the quarterback again here, and Kevin Jennings really continuing to work hard. Got chopped, got up, made the sack, he's fired up. Jimmy Adams there, who was also on the blitz. So defense did a great job, got more head stopped. And then went into a blitz here. Nice job by Derek Rutherford getting around some good blocks. And he's found Tyler Putnam down the sideline with a beautiful pass. Gives us another scoring opportunity. Another rollout here. Um, unfortunately, this is fourth down, and we didn't find anybody open. Uh, Derek tried to find uh, Putnam deep in the end zone. So fourth, it was too long for a field goal and too short for a punt, so we went for it on fourth down and missed. So two real good scoring opportunities wasted here early for our offensive team. But the defense starting to play well. Andrew Asbell there, number 50, freshman defensive tackle, making a good play. Here's a great hit coming across with uh, Nick Ross and Brian Conway mopping up the running back on the crossing route and stopping him short of a first down. And then the punt here, watch this nice return. Unfortunately, this return is going to be called back by a block in the back, but Zach Brower uh, had such a good return, I thought we well, might as well show it here. He just tripped up there, got going too fast, and he would have taken it all the way back. But as I said, there was a penalty. So going into the second quarter now, Josh, it's still 0-0. Defense playing well. Scotty Fadevong finally gets a broken out. You know, you can't stop him forever. He's going to find a hole and get a, get a big play. Now we had a, almost fumbled the snap. Big blitz. Derek just kind of heaves it out there to uh, Travis Hardgraves and we had set Hardgraves out there with a particular play in mind just to throw the ball up and let him go get it like a jump ball he did got it down to the two yard line and then Willie Cashmore breaks through we spend a lot of time on our short yardage offense goal line offense and it really shows up when we get down in there tight so finally we get the the uh, breakthrough that we needed and get a seven to nothing lead uh, Logan Reese here with a good kickoff Moorhead State was leading the conference in kickoff returns they couldn't handle the deep kick there, and we were able to pin them down, clear down about the 10-yard line. So great job by our kickoff unit. But then they came out with a big play. This is Jabari McGee, their excellent tailback. Runs for about 35 yards. Paul Collins makes a saving tackle on him. And so he's, uh, you know, they got into our territory, but defense comes up with huge stop here. Great tackle by Kevin Jennings. And then here on fourth down, they go for it. Andrew Asbell with good penetration, and the rest of the defense swarms in there. Here come the chains, fourth down, we'll see what happens. They stretch it out, we stopped them. So a gamble by Moorhead State here, and they, they uh, fail short. So we came out with a trick play, a fake reverse to Shea Maroney. Tyler Putnam way behind the secondary, and the ball was underthrown. So he, he was able to make the catch, but not the touchdown. And unfortunately, that uh, forced us to settle then for a field goal. But we did get the, the big change of possession, uh, field position there with the deep pass. And Logan Reese came out and just drilled this field goal to give us a 10 to nothing lead. And uh, you know that began to sort of get us settled down, I think, a little bit. Uh, Moorhead State comes back again, though. They had another good push into our territory. And defense comes up big again. This is going to be a play here. This is fourth down, you know, third down here. They try to run the fullback. And they decide again to go for it on fourth down right here. And Andrew Asbell makes a, a tackle on the option. Great play there. Here's, here's a replay of this fourth down play. Asbell's the tackle there. You can see he beats his man across, down the line, 
and the quarterback tried to find a little seam and cut through there. See, our defense was was flattened out down the line to stop the other phases of the option, and so if, if Asbel didn't make that play, the quarterback would have got some good yardage, but he did. So we stopped him twice in a row on fourth down situations, and then we came right back with the draw play to Scott Fadevong, and he got a big play out, on, out of that up to the 50-yard line, and then another run here by Scotty, trying to find that seam and burst all the way. He gets another 10 yards or so, and then we go into our twins formation here with a little bootleg, and a nice play out here in the, in the flat to Tyler Putnam. Good throw there by Derek Rutherford. So we continue the drive, mix in the run and the pass. And then uh, Rutherford here under the pressure, cover zero, finds his choice of two guys. Watch the blitz pickup. Watch the running back here, Matt Goodwin. Pick up the linebacker. Great blitz pickup. He stops him dead in his tracks. Gives Rutherford time. He had to uh, dodge a little bit. That pocket's closing in on him. Stayed he stayed in there. Both Putnam and Maroney beat their men. But because the play lasted so long, these, those post routes got pretty close to each other, but uh, luckily Putnam peeled off and let Shea catch it for the touchdown, and that ended up the first half. That score was actually, uh, that came with one minute left in the half, and that was huge to get us to 17 to nothing instead of 10 to nothing. It felt like we, that's kind of what we deserved, but we didn't have that kind of lead till just at the very end of the half. And of course, it could have been more coach. You're inside the 25 there early in the first quarter, can't capitalize. I thought it was really impressive the way the guys just stuck with it, didn't get too down on themselves after they weren't able to put up any points there in the first quarter, uh, early on in the first quarter. Right, We're, our red zone offense still needs some work, Josh. We, we haven't been 100% successful, and that's our goal to at least get a field goal every time we get in the red zone. We bobbled the field goal snap and, and went for it on fourth down once and missed. So we still have some work to do, but I agree with you. You know, we hung in there, we kept making adjustments. Moorhead State was running a different defense than what we expected. And so the first quarter was really difficult for us, but we, we managed to make the adjustments, get things done, and get some points on the board in the second quarter. So 17 nothing Drake at halftime. That's roughly half of the total output for the game. Lots of good stuff to come in the second half. Stick around, much more Rob Ash show to come. I'll raise you two dollars. I think you're bluffing. I call. I fold. With Pocket Poker from the Iowa Lottery, now you can play poker by yourself. Each electronic game card has 80 hands to play. Plus, you can win up to $500 instantly. I am all in. Pocket Poker. Because sometimes regular poker Honey? isn't in the cards. Woohoo! Some gourmet steaks. A great above most other steak companies. Their steaks are hand cut the old fashioned way from 100% USDA choice beef that are corn fed 320 to 365 days, making them the most tender and flavorful steaks you can get. Putnam Gourmet Steaks is the perfect choice. Not only great on your grill, but makes a great gift for any occasion. Our coaching staff has enjoyed their steaks, and we agree they are incredibly tender and flavorful. More Central Iowans are taking an easier way home with Regency Homes. Only Regency Homes offers you new, superbly constructed, energy-efficient homes backed by America's best home warranty. Our customer care team is ready to answer all your home buying questions. Design professionals help you choose your own interior touches. And Regency Homes' powerful financing options can make your dream home an affordable home. Join us on the easy path to good living. Regency Homes, with you all the way. Pretty commanding 17 nothing lead for Drake yesterday for your team over Moorhead State at home. Nice crowd. Seems like everything is going pretty good. What do you say to the guys at halftime? Well, Josh, it was interesting what came up at halftime. The guys started talking about the 2004 championship game that we played against Moorhead State out there. We were ahead in that game by 17 points, 20 to 3 in the second half. And Moorhead State came back for two late touchdowns, made a very exciting game. We had to recover two onside kicks at the end of the game to win that championship and so they started talking about how 17 points at the half was not enough and that we needed to go get some more. Okay so of course Drake trying to avoid a repeat let's go to the second half highlights right now. Actually Moorhead had the ball first here in the second half watch Jimmy Adams at the bottom of the screen playing off his block keeping his outside leverage stringing the play out for the rest of the guys to get there tremendous defense there by Jimmy Adams and the rest of the team and then the same thing happens going the other direction Jimmy at the top of the screen Working off the block, everybody else, along with Brian Conway, stringing it out. That is great team defense. Got him stopped, and we got the ball, and this was an audible by Derek Rutherford. He saw that nobody was covering Zach Brower. He gave him a quick pass out there to the outside. Then on third down, big blitz, 
Man-to-man -man coverage, great execution on the pass from Rutherford to Tyler Putnam. Here's another blitz situation, and this didn't work out very well for Moorhead. Nope. They lost the <laughs> linebackers, they left a gap open, and Scotty has the, a read that's a zone play where he can go anywhere that the, the opening is. He found the right gap, got through, and of course there was nobody left. So a big play early to give us a 24-point lead. Now they run a reverse, a nice call here, good play. They get some nice yardage down into the, about the 35-yard line, uh, giving them a scoring opportunity to come back. Also a good hard run here by Jabari McGee. This is a proud football team now. They're not going to go down easy. After the 24-0, we may have settled down, you know, gotten a little bit relaxed, but then the defense rose to the occasion one more time. There was a fumble here that we almost recovered. In fact, we had it briefly, and then Asbel got rolled over and lost the football. Then they, so that pushed them back a little bit. Look at this nice defensive play. Andy Green playing free safety, Paul Collins on defense, and so they got uh, Moorhead into a fourth down situation. And the field goal, no good. Wide to the left, another great red zone stop by our defense. Again, the quick pass out there. We're trying to get Moorhead State to loosen up the box, mm -hmm. give us some room to run, and those two passes from uh, Rutherford to Brower really helped us on that. And here's Derek with a great pass. Actually, Kurt Wilkerson rarely gets fooled with the camera, but he mm -hmm. lost, lost him. I think he was eating his hot dog up there on the press <laughs> box, but uh, Putnam made a nice catch on the sideline. And then Scotty with another good zone read here, nine yard gain, uh, getting the ball into the red zone area. And right as the quarter changed, we went down to the other end and Logan Reese drills another field goal. Excellent, and that was important. You know, we always think in terms of possessions. Uh, 24 to nothing is three possessions. Now 27 to nothing gives it, makes it four possessions. Right. And so that was a huge uh, deal there for us to get into position to go to four possessions. Here's great coverage by Tyler Marley and they called offensive pass interference on that shot into the end zone, so that moved Moorhead back. Great coverage, and then they try to attack our other corner, Paul Collins, and Paul makes a great play, knocking the ball away. So both corners doing a terrific job there on the pass defense, and then we put uh, Ben Osterman in at quarterback. This is third down and about four, and Willie Cashmore on our big back set. You know, he had the big run early in the game. He breaks free. And watch this effort. He is not going to be denied. Dives in the end zone, and here we're going to have the same play on replay. Watch Willie here. Matt Goodwin up in front. Marko Povich pulling 71. What happens actually is the guy slips off a block and Willie is stuck behind the line of scrimmage. But watch him drive his legs. The guy's got a hold of his jersey and Willie just pulls away with a great leg drive and finds an opening. And everybody else had kind of flowed past him and he breaks out. Now Willie used to be a tailback in high school and even though he's put on some weight he still has pretty good speed. And watch here at the bottom Josh on the sideline. First of all our guys cheer and then all those guys in the white shirts that's the 1981 team. They all came down for halftime and they never left. They stayed on the sidelines and they were cheering for Willie Cashmore on his long touchdown run. That was a terrific moment. Scratch what I said about big hole. Great individual effort. It was a great individual effort and defense continued to play well here. We've got our twos in. That's Jeremy Gell with a nice tackle. And then the last play of the game, uh, Moorhead State still has their starters in. They're still trying to score even though there's no way they can win the game. Defense didn't want them to score. And for the second time in about three weeks, our backup guys end the game with an interception. Nice bre pass break up there by 46. That's Cale Hunt. And then Cole Douglas, number 51, all uh, makes the interception and keeps uh, Moorhead out. They had scored a touchdown earlier against the twos. They were gonna try to tack another one on and we finished the game with the pick. I thought that was great for our defense. You know, Augustine Ag did the same thing against Platteville a couple of weeks ago with the interception late in the game. And then uh, Cole Douglas and the linebackers, Cale Hunt, uh, combined for that interception in this one. Nice way to finish the game. Coach, you've been leading this program to wins for a long time now. I know you've had a lot of great defenses and great offenses. I can't imagine you've had many defenses a whole lot better than the one that we've been seeing this season. They're playing real well right now, Josh. I'm very happy about that. And, uh, you know, if they continue this, they could go down in history as one of our top defensive units. It's very cohesive right now. The linebackers are the, the heart and soul, but that young defensive line has really started to play well, and our secondary is playing extremely good football right now. I think the uh, game statistics should reflect the defenses play at least a little bit. Sometimes statistics aren't completely telling. Let's take a look at uh, the statistics from yesterday. Right. Well, you know, it's actually interesting to see. Morehead State got some yards. They're they a very good offensive team, and, and but the, the, the bottom line is they Scored. only got seven yeah. points. Right. And, and that's that's the, the ultimate determining factor about a defense is what, how many points do you put on the board. So they got a few yards, but so did we. 480 yards for us, 360 for Moorhead. 
Uh, you know, their passing game was very good, I thought. They didn't come in as a great passing team, but we made them throw the short passes, and they never hit the big ones against us. You know, turnovers are still an issue for us. We can't seem to get through a game without having two turnovers at least, and Moorhead did a nice job. They had had, uh, they were minus 10 on turnovers for the season. They had lost seven fumbles and six interceptions this season so far, and they only had one turnover. So in spite of that, our defense did a great job. Well, as has been the case the past many weeks, lots to choose from as far as great plays from, from your team. We've got the Des Moines Mitsubishi Play of the Week coming up, plus our player interview. Stay with us. Hey, hey Mambo, Mambo Italiano. Hey, hey Mambo. For a limited time only, try Papa John's Sicilian Meats Pizza for just $11.99. That's a large Sicilian Meats Pizza, only $11.99. Loaded with spicy Italian sausage, pepperoni, Italian salami, and sliced linguisa. Papa John's Sicilian Meats Pizza, just $11.99. Call now or order online. Taste the difference. Better ingredients, better pizza. Papa John's. In the blink of an eye, the world can change. Are you ready? With insurance and financial products from Farm Bureau Financial Services, you can be. Life changes fast. We'll see you through. Farm Bureau for life. Every kid needs confidence to help them through sports, school, and everyday life. Let Grand Slam USA help you give your child that confidence. Grand Slam USA's clinics, lessons, and batting cages help players learn why they're hitting or pitching a certain way. And instead of just saying, do this, Grand Slam teaches your child how to figure out what needs to change to get the results they want. Call Grand Slam USA today to sign up for lessons, the next round of clinics, or batting cage time. Step out of the same old, same old and step up to an exciting new vehicle from Des Moines Mitsubishi. Like the stylish Galant, the head-turning Eclipse, the Rock Your World new Spider, or a great-looking fuel-efficient Lancer. Only at Des Moines Mitsubishi, 90th and Hickman on the Hickman Auto Road. Check out the hot-selling Endeavor or the Outlander, Montero or Raider. Plus the coolest and best selection of pre-owned vehicles as well. At Des Moines Mitsubishi, where we're driven to thrill at the top of the hill. For the Des Moines Mitsubishi, not play, plays of the week this week. Coach, both defensive. Go for it. We went with two defensive plays here, Josh. There were two fourth down stops in a row in the second quarter that both led to scores by our offense after the defense got them stopped. Here's the first play. They're going to try to run to the right. Watch our defensive line right here, Andrew Asbell and Jake Ramos. Asbell gets penetration, forces the back Fitzpatrick to go back, and he trips up and falls down. Ramos is there to keep him from going any further. Great push by the entire defensive line. You can see Brian Conway down there, 33, Cody Shelley, 13. So they got him stopped. And then just a little bit later, another fourth down play. This is gonna be an option play. Tried to go down the line to the right and Andrew Asbell, who's there at the tackle, defensive tackle, right down the line, grabs a quarterback on the option. You can see Ross and the other guys extending on out for the other phases of the option. But Asbell got the quarterback down and we were able to stop them. Two consecutive fourth down tries, both stopped by our defense in short yardage situations. That was huge in the second quarter of this game. And if the D wasn't fired up before that, I know that those fourth down stops, boy, I know that pumps up a defense. Jimmy Adams, boy, the Drake defense, so worth uh, the price of admission. Linebackers, Jimmy Adams spoke after the game. Our, our game plan defense was to be Simon Sound and it just hit him right in the mouth and and shut them up from the beginning. Before pregame, they were out there jumping on the bulldog in and you know made us real mad. So we came out fired up and we quieted them down real quick in the first half. Uh, th this year just seems like we're making we're making a lot more three and outs, getting getting out getting out drives a lot quicker. Uh, we're, we're stopping teams on fourth and short. We're getting a lot of pressure. You know uh, the the D line linebackers and and safeties. We're just all one more year experience. Everybody's flying around and making big hits out there. Uh, next week we get got a off off week is by a conference we're playing Waldorf. We got to go in, you know, we got to stick it to them, beat them, and uh, get better next week and practice, get better in the game, be ready to come back for Butler the week after that because they beat Dayton today. 
Nice attitude by Jimmy Adams there. Also, nice hair, Jimmy. <laughs> M much more to come on the Rob Bass Show. Stay with us. CokeRewards.com. Oaks Development's new upscale maintenance-free condos near Grimes are a better value than just free upgrades or no closing costs. Compare our best value pricing from $113,500 to $121,000. Go to OaksDevelopment.com for your best value. And check out Oaks Development Southeast Des Moines condos. All appliances, washer dryer, stone fireplace, and a five-year tax abatement. Don't be misled by free upgrades or cash towards closing. Look at Oaks' best values starting at $113,500. OaksDevelopment.com for your best value. There's only one place to stay in Des Moines, the fully renovated Quality Inn and Suites Event Center, with rooms that have a beautiful view, an indoor pool with an outdoor feel, and an elegant ballroom for all occasions. The Governor's Lodge is a great place to relax. There are conference rooms to accommodate your business meetings, then unwind in a room with a whirlpool. Plan your next event at the Quality Inn and Suites Event Center, downtown Des Moines. Welcome to Fire Creek. At our restaurant, you will find our atmosphere inviting and your dining experience elegant. Our unique banquet room is sure to meet your needs and expectations, seating 50 people comfortably and accommodating up to 80. For your next family gathering, graduation, holiday event, or rehearsal dinner, make your reservation today. Fire Creek is now open at 10 a.m. on Sundays with an off-menu brunch that offers something for everyone. And Fire Creek is open seven days a week and is locally owned and operated. I'm imagining it never gets old, it never will get old, <laughs> seeing your team on top of the Pioneer Football League standings, which is what we'll see right, right. now. Hey, it looks good, doesn't it, Josh? We're up there Absolutely. at 2-0, 4-1 overall. Uh, Jacksonville, also 2-0. They had two good road wins. They went to Valparaiso this week and, and won. They won at Butler the week before, so two uh, off to a good start there. San Diego also had a road win. They went to Davidson and won 50-21. to So... Uh, those two teams playing well on the road early, but the story in the league was Butler playing Dayton. They won that game. First time they've beaten Dayton since 1994. First year coach over there at Butler. What a great feeling there must be in Indianapolis today. Uh, Davidson, tough loss to, to uh, San Diego. Valparaiso, as I said, lost to uh, uh, Jacksonville. And, of course, Moorhead State down at the bottom. But I'm telling you, Moorhead State will win some games here before this season's over. They're a good football team. And we saw them gain uh, quite, you know, the scoring defense did well, but they were, you know, they can move the ball. And here we go with uh, still some more time to look at the highlights of the Moorhead State game. Quarterback Club Monday, 11.30 to 1 o'clock at Christopher's. That's open to anyone who'd like to come. I bring the computer and we watch the game again and sort of dissect it. That's a lot of fun. Then on Tuesday night, we have our radio show live from the Blue Bistro Italiano, which is still called 25th Street Cafe. It's a little confusing, but it's right there next to Drake, next to the Varsity Theater, also on KRNT Radio, 1350 AM. And don't forget our uh, post-game party. After all home games, we have an, yet another home game this week, and we'll be down at Raccoon River Brewing Company, as always, after that game next week. How was the party yesterday? It was good. We had a lot of the 1981 guys down there who met some of the guys from 2004, that championship team that came back. A room full of guys, two different decades, two different times of history, who had each won 10 games in their respective seasons. That was pretty cool. And hopefully there's a very nice party at the Raccoon River next Saturday night. You guys take on another night, another home game, Waldorf, 6 p.m. at Drake Stadium. That's going to be a good game for us. We have, we're going to get away from the uh, conference for one week, which is okay, you know, but we still have to realize that we have to get better next week because our conference opponents are going to be playing games and they're going to be getting better. I told our players, even though we're out of the conference, we're competing against our conference opponents next week in the sense of trying to get better, trying to have good practices, and of course, you know, making sure that we take care of business. We're not looking past Waldorf one bit. That program's getting better and better and better every week, and we're excited about playing another home game and playing them this Saturday at 6 p.m. And just, just we got about 30 seconds, Coach, a uh, little bit of an issue at quarterback. Right now, we're concerned about an injury. Derek Rutherford injured his elbow a little bit in the game. We won't know m much more this until the end of the week, but he may not be able to play. 
for a week or two, but Ben Osterman is a redshirt freshman guy that we have ready to go, big tall lefty. If he goes in, I'm sure Ben will do a good job. And then uh, Cole Engel may be uh, coming back from injury. Well, hopefully Cole will be able to come back and give us another guy. Thanks for watching, everyone. We will see you next week. Have a good week.